Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a special edition of Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. In our broadcast tonight, we are honored to be interviewing the iconic Mianta family. Most of us call Ente Mianta. Ente Mianta, welcome to Focus on Liberia. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. I want to say yakune to my bar people and to my Basa people, Mwene, and who else, what else I know? Oh, yes, to my Kiyo people, Pabwa. How, how about Grebo? Oh, now we have. <laughs> That one there, I said it first. <laughs> oh, <we> are... okay. <laughs> I want to welcome you. You know, uh, this is your first time on Focus on Liberia. So in a special way, we uh, we say welcome with a glass of water. We are glad to have you. Thank you. My pleasure. I want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. This is an exclusive interview with the legendary Mianta Famule. For those of you, and, uh, and I will say this in a minute, uh, a lot of us know you. We grew up with your music and also your advocacy. For those of you who don't know, I want to put a few things on the board. Uh, Madame Mianta Formula is an artist, a songwriter, a singer, a composer, a recording artist, producer, media practitioner. She's a mother, she's a grandmother, a public speaker, and a vocal activist. Presently, based in Liberia, she has lived in Kenya, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, UK, and the USA. She keeps recording, she keeps performing and getting involved with advocacy across West Africa. And I think uh, your first music, if I don't mistaken, is uh, uh, the Akosa, right? Akosa, uh, Sakesa. Yeah, that was 1978 in London. Yes. So the performing live in Koko Ryoko. So your performing live now in music span over decades. Wow. 1978 is a long time. Mm hmm and sure is. Yeah. Look, and I even saw some of the songs, Amo Sake Sad and Coco Lyoko, that was 1978. Yes. In London, 79, you know, London. And also uh, in Maroon Pan Africa, just for you, and the list goes on. And also, I want to mention you are the um, elder sister of Dr. H. Bama family. You know, you're one of the few people who have gotten it right, Dennis. Everybody else thinks uh, he's my older brother. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I had to look it up. I don't know why, for what reason. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> I'll everybody, everybody, and I always say, is it because he's tall and <laughs> he just assume, you know? So, Miss Famula, how are you doing? I am, I'm blessed, I'm thankful. You know, we're still here, we're still walking the planet. And every day you wake up, you say, um, thank God you can still breathe the air. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Great, and, and we and we're glad to have you. Uh, when I was doing this, so you have, of, you have one of my qualifications out, and it's one of my most treasured. I'm not only a mother and grandmother; I am a great grandmother. Oh wow! A great grandmother. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I, I also want to mention that uh, in your musical career, you you have worked and performed, you know, with such music luminaries like uh, Hugh Masekela, yes, Kofi Ganaba, Manu Dibongo, yes. and all these great, great artists. Wow. Yes. What? All my, all my big brothers or my colleagues, yes, it, it was wonderful. Um, it has been a wonderful journey. I have been blessed to be, you know, to have just um, interacted with those you've mentioned. And uh, I had the pleasure 
of meeting Stella, knowing him, uh, encouraging him to come to Liberia, and um, other luminaries, the Osibisa guys, my Tonto, especially my friend. Yeah, so, you know, I can sit and talk about them or reminisce and so forth. That's wonderful. And when I was preparing for the show, first, when uh, when you accepted to be on the show, I called a few of my friends. I said, guess what? I'm having the legendary Mianta formula. And guess what I was told? Who is that? Mm -hmm. And this person in the early 40s knows about music. And, but, and when I tried to go over the song, she could remember the um, Akash Crab. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, I want to put it to you, what is responsible for that, that uh, someone like you would not be as popular with uh, younger people, in, even in their 40s? I, I was shocked. Uh, I think it's a Liberian malaise. It's a Liberian sickness, if I can put it at that. Uh, I'm not the first. I'm not the first singer. I made a list here. If you ask Liberians for a list of musicians, if you ask them for two painters, whether they cartoonists or whether they do sketches. If you ask Liberians who are our poets, yeah. who are our writers, who are our carvers, who are our sculptors, who are our weavers, they have not a clue. They have not a clue, you know? So um, ask them about Melody 8 or the Greenwood Singers. And in a nutshell, Dennis, um, that is what has happened to us from generation to generation. We seem not to treasure anything worthwhile. Mm. There was a time when um, foreigners, Americans, Europeans in the 60s used to fly to Liberia to go to Bessau, or to go to Kinija, take pictures of the carvers, yeah. carving, etc. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. You understand? So um, I'm not an individual. I'm saying right. is, is the Iberian state of mind or whatever. Um, right. we, seem to, we seem to appreciate others. We've lost appreciation for ourselves. Um, Liberians are now uh, comfortable, more comfortable in Nigerian dresses, you know, head ties, than they are in our own fashion. Right. And so on and so forth. Wow. And I will ask you also another why, but before that, we did a, a memorial or show for the late uh, Cesar Gato. And it was the same reaction, right? Nobody knew who he was. I mean, a lot of people didn't know who he was, especially with the younger generation, people in their 30s and 20s. They, they didn't know. So when you say this is the labyrinth mentality, I go a step further to say, why? Um, OK. Let's say the media. I would say the media is responsible. You are in America right now. Yeah. And you can dial or you can turn to various radio stations. And certain radio stations are going to be playing the music of the 50s and 60s. Some are there to play the soul and blues, etc., rock, different categories of music at any given time of the day, of the month, of the year, consistently. Yeah. So for the American child, has an opportunity at some time to listen to the voice of Billie Holiday, to mm -hmm. 
to listen to the voice of Sarah Vaughan. And of course, the Marvin Gaze and Diana Rosses and so forth. In Liberia, you will be lucky if you have an opportunity to hear how are Daisy Moore? Yeah. Nima Burr, Fatou Geflo. These are wonderful musicians and they're still relevant. Right. And their right. music is still entertaining. And yet, on our 50 something radio stations, you know, when we had only one radio station, I think we did more for Liberian music across the board. Then now, 2021, where you have so many stations and they're playing everything <laughs> else. Yeah, they're playing everything yeah. else, but what is ours? That's interesting. So that's 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 in, yeah, that, that is really, and I, I, was, I was shocked. I was, oh, what is going on here? So speaking to you now, uh, I think it's a challenge as to what to cover, but I will try because I don't know how much I can cover with you in what in one hour, but I'll try. Let's start with the art because you started mentioning that already, being a defined as the performing arts, whatever arts. Let's talk about librarian art. Where, where are we? I mean, 78 producing your first album, I mean, till now, you have seen a lot. So talk to me about librarian art from what you've seen that time till now. Where are we? Um, I think it's, it's practically disappearing. It's disappearing. Sim and, and, and I think the disconnect, the disconnect had to come the period of the war, 1989, going into 1990. And um, obviously, when people are running and looking for food to eat, Preservation of art is the last thing on their minds. Yeah. And so we lost a lot of our culture in the masks, in, in, in the wood carvings, um, in sculptors uh, that were around. And um, it has been really and truly difficult to replace. I'll give you an example. In the Unity Conference Center in Virginia, there's a whole mural done by Van Richards. Mm. It is one of the most beautiful. And the interesting thing is, it has been preserved by virtue that it's on a wall. And you keep saying, this is not some, this is not a piece of art yeah. that should be in a building that has been, how do I put it, neglected yeah. or a building no longer in use because Van Richards has to have been one of our greatest sculptors yeah. of the 20th century. That also applies for the front of the E.J. Roy building on the cement, that is his work as well. And that should be preserved to infinity if possible. I see behind you there, that's a look like a labyrinth art <laughs> and that's beautiful. Always, and this is a painting, which way should I go? This is a yeah. painting by my favorite, uh, Leslie Lumet. Oh yeah, he's good. You understand and, yeah. and um, Right now, I'm in Accra. And so I said to myself, yeah, even though I'm living in Accra, I have to have something Liberian, you know. I have to have the best because the Ghanaians are so proud of their artists. Yeah. They're so proud of their painters. You go in their homes and they've got Glover and they've got Butler and all of these great Ghanaian artists. So I said, hmm. I'd have to have one of my brother's paintings here, and, I and everybody loves it. Yeah, and that's beautiful. So, yeah, and you, you spoke about the war. During the war, we went to a lot of places. I, for one, live in Guinea, Africa, Nigeria, and Ghana. 
before moving Mr. to the school. Himself. Yeah. So we have picked up a lot of things. Going back to Liberia now, sometimes you don't even recognize the Liberian culture anymore. Uh -huh. My goodness. Uh, let me call this girl. This thing is saying my battery. All right. We we will take is a short break. Right really my battery is Why is that possible? Yeah. Right. At Focus on Liberia, we discuss everything Liberia, from education to politics, arts and culture, entertainment, agriculture, history, religion, family, and technology. Focus on Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia, and I am Dennis Jack. Welcome back to Focus on Liberia. We are in exclusive interview with the legendary Mianta Formula. Do we have the uh, battery issue taken care of now? Yes, it's charged. Okay, great. So what I was saying, we have gone to all these places and we have picked up a lot of other different things, right? Including our dress code. So sometimes if you visit Monrovia, not just Liberia, but wherever Liberians are, it looks like the Liberian uh, way of dressing and doing other things, the culture is slowly disappearing. What do you see? Yes, we all see it. We all see it, we've talked about it. And I'm saying, I think it's, 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 it's our mentality. It's, it's all in our minds. Um, I don't know, I'm not a psychiatrist, no, whatever, but um, I'm saying whether the war in terms of spreading us all over the place, um, people scattered all over and some went when they were very young, etc. They have absorbed that culture or that uh, parent country and have come away, I can't, can't tell why. Really, I cannot tell you why. Because we come from somewhere, you know? We come from somewhere, we have beautiful things, we have a beautiful heritage, and yet um, the vast population seems not to know it or appreciate it. What can I say? Hmm. Let me, uh, I'm getting some comments here. You know, let me put them on the book, on the screen first. People, uh, Fatu, where did I say hi, Auntie Mianta? Jusu oh, Kamara say powerful underground diva. Levy Thompson <laughs> say, how are you? My only family that argue with me. You're looking good. <laughs> That's my cousin. She's for ANC. <laughs> <laughs> Zo Mangu say, can you play some of music? This is my first time hearing about her. So let's take some time and, and, and talk about you a little bit. OK? You, you, you studied music at the uh, American yes. Musical and Dramatic Academy and performed in the Apollo, yes. Apollo Theater in uh, Harlem. You, you've done a lot in that area. Tell, tell me and my audience a little bit about that. Because I see people are new. So let's, let's <laughs> get a little more into you. <laughs> oh, the story is so long, Dennis. OK, how did I? First of all, I went into America in 1968. And my ambition when I left and getting on the plane, I was going to study journalism, broadcast journalism, because I had come out of EBC. We were one of the first news readers on ELTV in 1967. And radio, et cetera, et cetera. So when I left to go to America, I said, let me go and expand that, get qualification, et cetera. But you know, I had a very wise father. And he said, hey, journalism, business you want to, Africa is not ready. 
for journalists. He really told me that. So it was in the back of my mind. And when I got to America and got into expanding my broadcasting, I was at the time going to the American School of Journalism first, New York School of Journalism, where you went to do broadcasting, you know, interviews, all this kind of thing to prepare you. And we had gone so far. However, in 1969, when I attempted, it was an automatic step, you take this test, when I attempted taking the FCC examination, which is the highest, if you want to do international broadcasts, et cetera, mm -hmm. I could not because I was not a US citizen. I could not. So, and then I said, but you know, they still give me my diploma. Right. But you could not take a test. So anyway, then I said, ah, well, you know, I love to sing and carry on and act crazy. Let me go and enhance that. Learn the styles, learn the voice training, learn the voice lesson. That's how I went to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy after that. And I got a diploma there after three years. And it was, it was a wonderful experience. Um, if I'm still around today, if I'm still enduring, it is what I learned at the American Musical And I think you left at that time to... So um, that's how it You went to attend the inauguration of President Tobra and you sang. Which song did you sing? You know somebody... I was getting <laughs> old, Lord Dennis. I tell you, and, and um, it was only the other day that somebody tried to refresh my memory that I did yeah. sing at that inauguration, President Talbot, 1972. Yeah. Um, January. I didn't even remember, you know, Mrs. Nixon was there, Secretary was there, all this. I was 21, 22 yeah, years old. That's almost 50 years. So. I, don't I, song. I swear I don't. Yeah. You're still getting some. Maybe books. somebody can refresh me who was there. Yeah. Well, they all probably Please. dead. Please, if you were there, refresh us. Huh? Call Fambula, say my brilliant mentor. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> my, my professor, Dr. Wesley, says, Sister Mianta, this is a great honor to have you live chat with your people. Love you, my big sis. You better get well soon. Kick that flu. Most people return to their country to visit, you know, but remain in the diaspora. You didn't do that. You know, you left and went back home. What, what was the trigger? What, you know, I think, I think it was like 1970, you moved back in 1977 and then returned permanently seven years later in 1984. And since then you've been there. You're different from mm -hmm. the, uh, many people. Um, Why are you went back? I got to America in 1968. And if you go back to your history in 1968, it was a very turbulent time in the United States of America with the same issues of inequality, race, etc. And in as much as a Liberian and African you were spared some of the indignities that our African-American brothers and sisters had to go through, I realized that this, was, this place was not for me. Um, I was born in Liberia, had an opportunity to get my foundation education in England. I was in Sierra Leone, in Kenya. I grew up in Africa and I saw Yeah. The beauty, the freedom of Africa, and America was just too much of a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> It was just too much. Yeah, really. They yeah, said, yeah. who coming to stay in a place? No. First of all, I mean, I was much younger and more aggressive. 
They would have killed me by now. <laughs> Seriously and, and it's, speaking, you know, it's, it's it's worth mentioning too that your father, uh, the sen is well, my family senior was ambassador, and that's why you were in those places. And uh, so it's like, uh, yes, you, you grew up as a a, a pan Africanist, if, if to put it that way. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Very much so. I mean, uh -huh. Sierra Leone is. Sierra Leone is my second home. Ghana is my sanctuary. Nigeria is my home away from home. All of those places. And even Kenya, I was just saying to my Kenya friend, it's for me to come and see you all because she has her mother there, um, Likimani, Motoni Likimani. She's a Kenyan writer. My sister, you know about her. She's going to be 97 years old. And this woman is phenomenal. So. I got to make a trip to Kenya yeah, to see, see her while she's still breathing. Yeah. I, I, I listened your, to your song. I watched that Oba. And I was like, you know, Oba, that woman. And I'm like, this this shouldn't, this doesn't sound Liberian. It's like a Ghanaian word, Oba, meaning lady. Mm -hmm. So that That's that right. tells me that, uh, and you're saying Ghana. So you live in all these places. So it's like you are connected one way or the other to these different countries, to different culture. What I'm getting at there is mm -hmm. uh, you form a group called, uh, that, that's, a, that's a group, the Oba Girls Education Outreach, which gives scholarship to young Liberian girls. Tell us about yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's a long, well, okay. I left America 203 to come back to, because I was there for a little bit, uh, late 90s, 203. And um, I came back to Ghana and I happened to have paid a visit to, to the Budubura refugee camp. I met mothers and people, some I recognized, some knew me, who told me of the plight of their children, they didn't have money to get them in school, etc. I was obviously gravitated to young girls. And I said, but these are Liberian girls. Why are they not having an education, even if they are in a refugee camp? So it was from Budubura in 204 that we started sponsoring girls. They stayed on the camp, they went to school and paid their tuition. And then I got into Monrovia in 205, and the situation was even alarming. Um, young girls, nine, 10, all in the street, waiters on their heads, not in school. And when I would chat to them and say, why are you not in school? It was either my mind carrying money on nobody. And so I'm, I'm saying, do you want to go to school? And they were all very, yes, we want to go to school. I said, okay. Now I'm talking to about 10 girls around my well. So I say, you want to go to school? They say, yes. I said, well, come see me tomorrow morning. I'm on Ashman Street, Dennis. The next morning, there were 400 young girls. Wow. From 9 to 11, 15, 16. <laughs> the noise woke me up. <laughs> My mom said, eh, hey, you, hey, you want to get scholarship? 400 <laughs> the world had gone all over West Point, Ashman Street, and that's how we started for Bass Girls. <laughs> First 100, and then the next week, I added another 100. Yeah, because it's, um, my friends told me that trying to educate people is, uh, is like going in the bottom of the barrel in terms yeah. of funding and continuity and all of that. So that's how we started of us girls. And I'm very pleased that uh, we accumulated something. Um, four, four, four or five of them are out of college. One is oh, now wow. looking at medical school. And uh, yes, and uh, those who we took from three years old are graduating in the 12th grade. So I feel very, very proud. Excellent. So, so what do you see as an obstacle 
to quality education in Liberia, especially girls' education? The obstacle is teachers. The obstacle is teachers. Um, we have no teachers. The people who taught me and you are no longer in the classroom, darling. What are they? They have gone to less stressful jobs. Okay. They've gone to less stressful jobs. And, uh, you know, the best teachers, if you think about those from the 90s and so on, they won't go in the classroom again. I realized in 1999, when the interim government came into effect, we call this great meeting of all the teachers in Maserato County to come and for us to hang here and see how we could. 50% of them told us right there and then they weren't going back into the classroom. They were afraid of the kids. They, you know, it was like, and then Yata did not check before, the children not do they think I no respect, etc. So 50% of those people who know and have the qualification and experience to be in the classroom, they've left. Oh. They've left, they're doing other things. They're, yeah. doing, they're doing other things, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and so we've had to make do. We've had to make do. I have to be honest with you. 50% uh, of what we have left should not be teaching anybody's children. But <laughs> that's our predicament. Yeah. No, seriously well, speaking. I mean, yeah. if you hear some teachers, I need them. If you hear some teachers, you will wonder how they're going to be able to give my child, you know, the best of things. It's 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 really a sad state of affairs. Really yes. a sad state of affairs. Now a solution, a solution can be that uh, all those graduates who graduate with good grades and should automatically be enrolled in the teacher's college in Liberia and, and, and let us invest in about 10 teachers from America or from Ghana or wherever in teachers' college to prepare the next generation of teachers. Teachers, I agree. That's the, that's the only way we can do it. That's the only way. And you know, the sad part for me is that I've met so many Liberians in the diaspora, master's degree, and I'm saying, why are you here? Why are you here? We need you in Liberia. But in Liberia, a master's degree holder, you're not prepared to even pay $1,000 a month. We can pay other characters $10,000, $15,000 a month. But people with masters, I mean, I have nieces, they're in America. How can I convince them to come to Monrovia from their 80,000 a year job, <laughs> you know, to come to Liberia but, to but, work in the educational sector? Yeah. It can be done if we put our priorities right. Right. And we're just scratching the surface because I definitely need to have you back so we can go more in depth. I want us to turn to your music. And if you just joining us, this is focused on Liberia. My guest is the legendary Miantar Famula, who's joining us right now from Ghana. And uh, we are discussing, it's an exclusive interview. We talk about the art. We talk about some part of our life. Now let's go to your music. Quite recently, you were on BBC, I heard that. And uh, your music, we played that at the beginning of the show. You pray for me and I pray for you. But before we get to that, I want you to play your song that's the big C. Honestly, I just heard it when I was about to interview you. <laughs> so let me play Are that song. Yeah, I've heard the other songs, but not this one. And I like it. <laughs> <laughs> 
The big C. Yes. I've never heard anyone calling the corrupt people Tiffy Tiffy Jankoli. <laughs> you didn't that's... live in that era. You didn't live what? in that era. Dennis, you, you're a very young man. Uh, no, what when I, mean... I was growing up when they caught the rogues. Right. No, uh -huh. what I mean is those rogues, those are the ones we call the Tiffy Tiffy, right? But the big rogues in the ministry, yes. we don't call them like that. Uh, well, the song the, the song was written in their honor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So tell me about that song a little bit more. Corruption is everywhere. The big C is corruption. Yes, it's everywhere. But um, there was an incident in 2013. You say you've never heard this. This song has been out since 2013. Um, I don't know how where you follow Liberian politics or what is happening in the country. Know. But 2013, there was this big kind of saga between uh, what a man named a, a former representative Edward Ford, my sister, yeah. the superintendent. You eat, I eat. Get, to get her to compromise. Yes, you <laughs> eat some and eat some. And that was what when I did that song, and 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 I was angry when I did that song, because during this whole saga, when Grace Pa and Mary Bro were taken to the House of Representatives or whatnot, I, Miss Fumule, decided to go and identify with my sisters and uh, certain members of the House of Representatives. I won't call their names because I'll be giving them too much publicity, but they organized a group of students, Dennis, about 200 of them to wait for me at the, at the uh, House of Representatives. And when I got down the taxi, man, they were on me abusing, castigating. Ah, la la. So yes, I, I mean, I left the next day, like I said, let me get out of here. Let me get out of here because they don't want to see a mad woman. And I got to Accra and my is flowing. I said, I'll get you. And I did the so song. In their honor. <laughs> yes, in their honor. Yeah. <laughs> the big scene. I'll be I'll be gone. I'll be gone. But when the children listen to the big C 10, 20 years from now, they will still hear the story. Yeah. And your little yeah. song is and You Pray For Me and I Pray For You. I played that at the beginning of the uh, show, but let me just play that for a few minutes and then we, we, we talk about that briefly. Okay. Since that moment, 
The COVID-19 pandemic has taken so many lives and caused massive disruption to families, societies, and economies all over the world. years almost 50 years and your voice is still like distinct how do you do this <laughs> Dennis I don't even know because I love my wine <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's God's gift God's gift yeah I agree and, and this oh, you know you for me say. Yeah. Tell me about the song and what, what was the inspiration? I think it's about COVID or? The COVID or thing, man, from, from mm -hmm. last year, from 2020, last year, March. And um, I mean, we haven't had time. We haven't recovered. You know, I don't know haven't. about you. What we, have not, we have not recovered. Um, it, it goes up. Come on. And you know, last year, like around June, I started to make a list in my my book of the people I knew. Okay, not just celebrities that were known to me, people that I actually knew and interacted with at some stage of my life. By November, I mean. I couldn't go on. I could not go on because every day, and in Liberia in the past four months, my goodness. So, you know, it, it, during this period, how do you come with, I feel love or let's boogie boogie? Yeah. No, no way, too many people are hurting. Too many people are still hurting. And, and we have not been able to recover from one pain and then you go to the other, you know. I mean, it was horrendous in uh, May, June because I'm getting word from Kenya, this friend has passed. In Nigeria, this friend has passed. Here in Ghana, where I am. And, and you know, you can't even go and sympathize because right. of the COVID. You're restricted. You cannot even go to the funerals and pay your respect. So the pain is, you know, is heaped on day after day. And, and that's why we, you know, we just started saying, pray for me, oh, I will pray for you, yeah. pray for me. And my mind went back to that old upriver song yeah. that they used to sing in Mother Black Church and stuff. You pray for me and I pray for you. And it was just something that stuck with me. 
it was just a song that kept ringing in my head. And I said, I must do this. I must do this my way. That's the only way. You know, it kind of gave me, it soothed me. Yeah. And therefore, it gave me hope. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Let me read a few comments here, and then we can uh, go into our last segment. Yes, please. I can't read too much my glasses. Yeah, no, I'll There's read the comments. Okay, thank you, darling. Yeah, I'll read the comments. Abraham Connor said, that's a Liberian outcome I'm proud of. Thanks, Ente Miata, for taking us back to the golden days in Liberia. Keep it up. And your, your, oops, your sister here, and I'm going to read. Okay. When you were talking about education, uh, CFR say distant learning can diminish the fear factor for 50% of teachers who opt not to engage. Uh, that's sad for many self qualified returnees. Rufa say, I'm a testimony for her working in ensuring young girls got education. Uh, Dr. Wesley said, oh Lord, the song was created in their honor. Enter Miata says about her song, The Big C. <laughs> uh, Stephen, yeah, Johnson no said, <laughs> Stephen Johnson said, this is awesome. Uh, Hamilton Zilli said, Dennis, how is your relationship with Fatu Giflo? Are they friends? So they are, we, we have of, uh, and you mentioned Fatu Gifflo, Howard Desimu, and the rest of the other librarian mm -hmm. that is earlier. And uh, we had Fatu Gifflo some time ago mm -hmm. on this. So, so yeah, so that's a question there for you. <laughs> yes, I mean we might not be, we might not be um, Buzam, but we are musical colleagues. Therefore, Jack. Her career, I know what she's done. And um, several times, actually, over the past oh, 20 years or so, when I was in America, we talked so often about coming together and doing something, but uh, it never yeah. came to fruition. But it's not late. We're all yeah. still around. And who knows? One of these come together, do like a Legends night, with the Fatu, with Howard Daisy Moore, and 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 Nimba Bird. Nimba Bird, yeah. And some of the old guys might be around. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, can you imagine? I've forgotten Crusoe's name. <laughs> okay. Henry Crusoe. Yeah, wonderful singer. That's yeah. from Cal our Fam time. I know. Cal Famula says she is politically conscious African conscious. artist. Like Miriam Makiva, Hugh Masekela, Ki Sonia Ade, and other Liberia is blessed. Talking about you being politically conscious, I've been following you uh, lately on your social media, and, and you know, and, and you've been engaged politically, right? In fact, uh, you were at one point you even ran for you know as a senator, if I'm not mistaken. So let's talk a little bit of national. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit of national issues now. You know, uh, you you grew up in politics. Your father was ambassador, and we all learned the story when he came from Kenya, the whole thing with Tudman and all that. Looking at Liberian uh, national issues, especially politics, you know, then and now, how will you assess the overall political trend and issues in our country? Um, we basically have the same system. And I believe it is the system that is warped. The political system, um, the executive, the uh, judiciary, and the legislature. But we all know that the executive weeds wields the power hands yeah. uh, and then the yeah. yes our legislature so obviously it's going to we're going to fall into the same trap however 
The difference between yesterday and today is that yesterday there was seemingly etiquette, there was style. Um, I don't know if you get my drift. Um, I'm talking about the ex executors of whatever was happening. Okay. All right. Um, in 1968, I could not have recorded a song, Tiffy Tiffy, because I was not of this blatant corruption. Do you understand? I want to say yeah. they did it with more tact. They did it with more class. Yeah. <laughs> but now, yeah, but now, I mean, systematically, all right, it didn't mm -hmm. just start now. It's like values have dropped, integrity have dropped, and and, and the, exec the executive uh, does what they want. Um, and in order to do what they want, they compromise the judiciary and they compromise the legislature blatantly. Okay, uh, we never heard about Mr. Totmo, or even Mr. Talbot. I never heard of Mr. Talbot sending brown envelope to the legislature. Maybe he did, though. Mm. But I think those um, those days knew how to come around. You understand? And, and yeah. they, they knew how to dialogue. And I cannot see a Senate where you had the likes of a uh, 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 Charlie B. Sherman or uh, 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 David or so. I cannot see them saying before we we'll John Brown, you gotta pay us. We never mm -hmm. heard of it that, for that. However, our return to this democracy is almost, it's, 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 ugh. It's like a joke. It's like, uh, you know, kind of insulting. Yeah. I had a friend. I had a friend who was nominated to be superintendent of Maserato County. Someone who had integrity, who had um, ethics. A young woman by the name of Grace Kwan. And I'm saying. Grace Pan didn't steal any money from anywhere. Being asked to pay for her confirmation. I mean, I was totally disgusted. And I was wow. there telling her, you better not pay. I'm saying, don't pay. Say, so you're not going to pay, blah, blah, blah. And then it was like the other people were saying, well, you pay, you're not getting a job. Mm. Can you imagine? Somebody wants to work for their country. Yeah. One of the good ones, and if you ain't got that, you know, that's that's the level. That's the level right. we've gotten to. It, 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 it's 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 not right. nice. It's not good. Right. It's not good. It's like someone would do it and, and say in your face, "Go sue me." <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes. And, yes. And, and you you you've been you've been. You've, you've not been quiet. I, I read a post that you, you posted like this one. You know, you said, Dear African President, especially Buhari, Akufo Ado, Kegami, and Ramaphosa. So what happened yesterday? I don't know if you're referring to Guinea. So we are at the mercy of this child. Wake no, up, Africa. I wasn't referring to Guinea. We okay. woke up, I think it was the day before yesterday, or what We woke up. And we had no Facebook, we oh, had yeah. no WhatsApp, we no had no Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. The first day I was aware that Facebook owns Instagram, owns What's whatever up? thing called Messenger. What's up? Yes. Yeah. So our entire continent, our entire continent, was without information, no connection to each other. 
and from using providers. Do you understand? Yeah. And compared to me, wait now. So because Mark Zuckerberg and people, they were cut off. So don't we have a Facebook? How come we don't have Facebook? How come we don't have our own institution so that yeah. we don't be left naked? And that's why I call the Kangames, the Akufuados, and all of them. Our African leaders have to start thinking. Eh, eh. Right. Oh, eh, wow. Eh. This is so profound because eh, I like how you say, at the mercy of this child, this little boy. At a child. And Yes. Right. And because they were facing this Congress, is, it probably is, became. Yeah. It's, it's a whistleblower facing Congress. So maybe he got he got annoyed and he cut all of us off. We couldn't talk to our relatives in Africa. And I'm saying, and I'm saying that is the, what is it? That is our challenge. Yeah. It's bad enough they're taking all the minerals out. Is bad everything out. Now you even coming for the culture, uh, the, the, the statues and things. Now we won't be able to communicate with each other. You understand me? We're talking about AU, AU, Africans unite, blah, 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 mm. blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Mark Zuckerberg can decide next week I'm going to lock the whole continent down. Wow. And then what? Hmm. We've got IT kids here who are brilliant. Yeah. All over this continent. Look at what they're doing with IT in Kenya. Also in, in, in Rwanda. We've got the young people. What is stopping us yeah. from setting up, making available? What is this that we keep doing, you know? No, no, no. I was... I yeah. was... I, I, I took that very seriously. And no, that's then, very profound. I was, I was also worried about the young people because their lives are so built around social media. I was convinced that if it went on for another two days, we have 100 million children who would have mental issues. Yeah. So we're still great. No, yeah. Yes. yeah, true, true. Well, well as soon as we were reconnecting my granddaughter in Atlanta, my granddaughter in Atlanta came on. I miss your. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Great, but great. We, have to, we have to start thinking about those things. We have to start thinking about We, we do. And, and how do we even extend oh, that? Because yeah, that, post, that post, I didn't even understand it, but it's so profound. And uh, so I don't know what the next step would be. Are you going to call someone and say, hey, what are we doing? Because I think we should extend from that Facebook post to uh, practicalize it. Well, what do you think we can do? Well, you people are in the media. Okay. I think we need to highlight it. I talked to some friends. I talked to some friends in, who also felt the same. Yeah. And um, to raise the issues, you know, to raise the issues with our leaders. Every year, our leaders come together and uh, meet in Addis Ababa or wherever. And I'm saying, I wonder. I wonder how many recommendations and uh, suggestions. They take from we Joe public. Yeah. You understand? What happens is foreign ministers go, they group they draw up the agenda, the agenda from last year, blah blah is the same thing. They deal with the same topic and everything else. And, uh, and then everybody goes their way. Mm -hmm. But let's come to Liberia. Huh? Let's come to Liberia because you've been you you also been vocal. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere where they say uh you are throwing bombs and misa, and I got one of those posts. I want to put it on the screen. If you oh, can comment on. <laughs> All right. 
Where you know, uh, uh, there is uh, the subject in the post referred to me once as a loose cannon. Hmm. A loose cannon. So, I mean, I have to live up to my reputation. <laughs> if I'm known as a loose cannon, then you better believe, honey, missiles are coming. Misa is coming. And I'm going to put the Misa on the screen, right? And let's, let's see. And this is, where, this is where we're going to close. And then I will bring in, uh, let me put on our, uh, you know, a few of our people want to interact with you. So let me open the phone line so that they can uh, call and give their comments or ask questions in a few minutes. The number is on the board, 605-313-6004. The code is 79143. If you want to uh, interact with the legendary Miata Formula, please uh, call. We will give you at least a minute each to uh, to do that. But in the meantime, in Liberia, you are elections is coming and uh, you are involved. Here is your post. The fact that Madam Ellen Johnson Salif is so opposed to GNB becoming president, the more I will campaign for him. 2022, let's show this woman that Liberia does not belong to her and she would not decide for us anymore. If you are a Salif groupie, stay off my post. You have been warned. A friend was murdered in Monrovia and I'm angry she put us in this mess. Tough words. What's happening here? You campaign for President Salif and I believe uh, you were one of us. Oh, yes, I did, Madam Salif. But you know, I was, oh, I was carried away with the um women's participation i was excited about liberia producing the first woman on the continent yeah so i had to have been there i had to have been there uh knowing my political involvement for almost 30 years um i have to be very honest um i expect more from madam salif I did. And um, at a stage, even though there was that enthusiasm, but by uh, 209, if I can share with you, uh, I don't think I was one of Mrs. Seti's favorite people. And so there was really not much interaction except officially if I was asked to do a show or so forth. But a lot of people were under the misconception that because I uh, uh, campaign so hard for her in 205 that, you know, we were bosom buddies all this time around, and that is not the case. So let me just say there were many issues that I felt that we, and I say that we as women could have done in our country, we could have done much more uh, on, on women's issues, on girls' education, um, and so much more, and so much more, the promotion of women and, and girls, etc. So uh, all of those things got to me. And then, of course, in uh, 2016 or so, I believe Madame Salif and others um, came up with the notion that uh, generational change should come into peace. And uh, I was kind of surprised at that because Madam Salif herself was elected at 69 going into her 70, 70th year. And yet uh, you, 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 you purposely, you purposely threw that mantra in order to eliminate people of the 60s, people of the people in the 70s, etc. cetera, and there, there alone, I knew we were in for disaster because wherever we are in the world, we need experience. Uh, the 15 year old or the 20 year old is not going to write a poem with the death of a Patricia Jabba Wesley. When they get there, they'll be able to do it. And so for me, I was very disappointed at the end of Mrs. Ellie's tenure. And uh, what made me even more angry, because like I said, I, I held her responsible, 
okay, I held her responsible. Maybe she will have to write a book um, to try and convince people like us that she just felt she did the right thing. Um, and so, yeah, it just came out that day. I was angry, I heard bad news, and I was asking questions, why is this happening in my country? You know, why is this happening? Uh, the, the, the son of the former president, that is a household name, um, is murdered, etc. You know, mm -hmm. that means I can be murdered. Any of us can be murdered. And that was the result. That, that's why I posted it. And of course, we have been getting, we have been getting hints, or how do I say, um, rumors. And uh, how Mrs. Salif um, is now supporting other candidates, another candidate. Right. So my thing here is you gave us one candidate before, we've hit rock bottom. So we really don't need you to decide for us again, allow us to decide ourselves. This is the this is the iron lady. Who? Mrs. Salif. Uh, uh, Salif. So when, you, when you openly go against the iron lady, yeah. I mean Mrs. Mrs. Salif is a woman like myself. She is um she has been our leader. And in Sierra Leone, they say tell friend true. Not well, friend. Tell your friend the truth, and it should not spoil the friendship. So I live by that mantra. I'm not a groupie. I'm not a sicko fans. I'm not a praise singer to anybody. To anybody. If I feel strongly enough, I will tell you. I will tell yeah. you, and, and, and that was the basis for our drift after 209 because I was opinionated and uh, I dealt with issues that people didn't want to deal with. Thank you. Well, you know, when I saw that post, that's what came to me is that, okay, Madam Salif, because most of the things that you're saying now is uh, these are things you know, how Madame Salih from the um, her participation in the war, how she has allegedly double-crossed a lot of people. In fact, when she was uh, at the finance ministry, she had this stem with BS that she was stem. Uh, Tom, the way you have written about her, uh, the widow of the late Thomas Kuangba had written. So with all these things were already there and you, you supported and you, you know, took her, now she's president. And, and after that, seeing those posts, the first thing that came to my mind was like, what changed? These things, Mrs. Sally have always been like this and people have always said it. Are you just coming to know all this? I'm just coming, I'm just coming to know all of this. You will never believe. I did not read Tom Williams letter until 209. I wasn't around, I never read it. And, and you know something, Dennis, um, Liberians come up with a lot of rumors. Yeah. They come up with a lot of rumors. They, and, and so we hear things, but they're not proven. You will not believe. I Liberia war. I was not in America with Ellen Salif and others. So the intrigues and stuff that was going on, I was not aware of it. All I knew was Madame Salif was at the United Nations. And after that, I believe if well, like or something or reverse, I did not know that all these dramas with the Tom Williams and all of this was happening. I was not aware of it, like I said, until 209. And in 209, when I became aware of it and realized really that I had been had, I don't know about others, that I had been had, I was ready to comment to Ms. Salif to take the TRC recommendation, not run for a second term, in order to salvage her legacy as the first 
woman president in Africa. That was my recommendation to her, but she didn't think that was a nice thing to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me read a few more comments, and if there's no call, then we're going to be winding this down. Uh, Ibrahim Conner said, when we're talking about the legends, he said, let's focus on LeBron, organize the event. We need it so that we can have all the legends, the uh, Fatou Givlo, the Howard Decimo, the ZTT, the uh, the answer from all coming together. So that's a big challenge thrown to us. Uh, Sam Wallace said, that can be a serious comment. I think when you were talking about like, uh, Todd Murray, talked about the did their corruption with class. Sam Wallace yes. said, that can be a serious comment. Both Todd and Trouble were extremely corrupt. Successive no. leaders since have lived what we live. I'm saying we didn't see it and we didn't hear of it. I never heard of a brown envelope in our legislature. I never heard of it. Maybe it was wrong. I never, but I think I was old enough. I was following that. Yeah. Understand? No, it was not as blatant. It was not as blatant. And you know, the irony of it is that uh, at the change in 1980, um, we executed those individuals for rampant corruption. I'm saying, what would we do today? <laughs> Double rampant, right? What, uh, what's a word bigger than rampant? What's a word bigger than rampant? <laughs> <laughs> we need to find yes. it. Yeah. So she was one of our you best know? traditional artists. Uh, Eugenia said, thanks for your contribution to our country. Uh, it's God now. God, give me the gift. River says, so so what happened to our traditional music? Why aren't people following in the footsteps of the previous generation of singers? But we, just, we, we, talk, Dennis, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, we have Joseph, to change our minds and change our attitudes. Joseph Kokro said, did you get to meet Melinda Jackson Parker of the famed Cousin Mosquito song in person? Your opinion of her as a singer. Oh, I knew I loved her. I met her. I loved her. And let me tell you, Melinda Jackson in her time, I appreciated her as an artist, but the same Liberian attitude. What are all they singing? What are all they singing? What are all singing? What, and what was she singing? I'm but a rice is sweet. If you marry a girl from Cape Man, cassava leaf. She was giving us our culture in music. Do you understand me? And this was an African American. Yeah. And African American who came to Liberia and plunged herself into our culture, and the Liberians were condemning her. Now, today, we wish we had all of her music. I knew her. I knew her. Hmm. Um, yes. Washington Boca say, Hello, uh, Auntie Mieta. I admire one of your songs, Woman O. Oh, this is your time. Please, Mr. Jab, play that song. <laughs> and, uh, That's the Oba song. Dennis, is it true That's that Madame... Oba song. Yeah, the Oba song. We'll, we'll play that. Is it true that Madame former president has and is vehemently against Joseph N. Buakai's presidential ambition? I know it from a close friend that works directly with her foster son that is minister in the present government. Then Benjamin Semvi said, Madam Fambule, did you support Ellen Johnson Sirleaf for her second term? Also, what was your relationship with her when you performed at her noble ceremony? Jackie Sayer said, the songs in you our know, country today. Yeah, ben, ben Sabi, I don't feel like he answering his question. His question. Say that again. Ben Sambi was also. Ben Sanvi was also a friend of Mrs. Salif. <laughs> then Ben Sanvi became friend of Bromsky. Then Ben Sanvi became friend of CDC. I don't like those kind of people asking me questions. I'm consistent. Ben, get off it. What's the next question? Jackie said, the songs in our country today is symptomatic of the filth in the society. 
Mm-hmm. I don't I don't really listen to 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 that many of them. Uh the young one who died in the car accident. Oh Lord, what's his name? He was doing some really Yeah. Good Quincy things. B. Good Quincy B. A little Quincy, more. Quincy yes. Yeah. Quincy B. But most of the others, you know, you might talk and I don't even people to explain what to say and uh, <laughs> that's hip code. Well, it's hip code, yeah. Yeah, hip code. Mm-hmm. But if if Liberians want to uh, support singers and hold singers up, I think the generation and now we have Nicholas Buiga. And we have Vivian Akuto. We also have Bernice Blackie. And um, and Mene, Miss Mene, she's in uh, Minnesota. There are a few of them who, who are doing some interesting thing. But unfortunately, the junk music has taken over the airwaves. Let's play for a few minutes the song Oba, and then we'll be asking for your fan, your closing comments. <laughs> Mothers of the universe, Mother Nature's God, who come save your child, come save your child. I said, come, come, sisters, come and take back your child. This crazy world is breaking and burning. It needs your strength right away. Mother, don't be your Mother Nature's guide. Who take back your child? Take back your child. Oh, oh, oh. I learned, I heard that song. I said, Why is that not in Gribble? <laughs> Why is the song not in Gribble? Yeah, the because my sister and I have, yeah, I know my sister and I have not sat down to do it. But the song itself has a history. The song itself has a history. My best friend, bosom friend, a Ghanaian lady passed in 1993. And I wanted to do something in memory of her. But then I wanted a message out to women using her her name to get a message out to mothers and the women out there. And so that's how that song came, came to be. But definitely I would love to do a Gribble song. <laughs> that was a beautiful one. But thank you so much. Before we uh, close, we want to just show our viewers some of our shows that are coming on. And then after that, we ask for your closing comment. Uh, 
Okay, love. Tomorrow, we're going to have on our show the Tough Talking Thursday. Did Cummings actually change the framework document of the CPP? Or is Mr. Benin Ayure telling a lie? Where is Joseph M. Buaka in all this? The best political panel on the planet will be here tomorrow, and I'll be your host. Also, on Sunday, we have another legendary group, the Faith, Hope, and Love Trio. That's Philip Dan, Lira Francis, and Pastor Jeremiah Mayonga. They will be our guests right here on Focus on Liberia this Sunday on Focus on Liberia. Also, on Saturday, we're going to have the police and reports of ritualistic killings in Liberia. The former deputy director of C for CID Affairs, Charles Ebu King, will be our guest. My co-host will be the deputy, the former deputy NSA director, Mr. Wilmont Cooney. We're going to be looking at the leak audio tape with Ellen Cochran and uh, Serena Seifert talking about human heads, images of ritualistic killings floating on the internet, the IG's press conference, and more. You don't want to miss that. Again, keep it here at Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. Again, uh, Madam Formula, it's an honor to have you. Let's get your closing comments. I'm going to direct my closing comments because I, while you were doing that, I was reading the comments. And it seems as if uh, uh, one of your viewers, or Mr. Ben Samvi, has an issue with the fact that uh, Madam Salif nominated me as her guest artist to perform perform at the Nobel Peace Award. And I'm saying for Ben Samvi and others, the reason why Mrs. Selly chose me, I do not think it's because of my friendship with her. It was my track record as a performing artist. I performed for William Stadman. I, perform, I performed for William R. Talbot. I performed for Dr. Amy Boyer. And I performed for Mrs. Salif. Therefore, um, he seems to have a problem that it was because I was a favorite. Now, check this out, Dennis. The other Liberian that was nominated for the Nobel Prize nominated Anjali Kijo as her artist of the night. Every, every one of the recipients had to nominate the artist. And Lehman Bowie nominated Anjali Kijo the artist that she liked. And guess what? The Liberian media and public bashed her for going to take a foreigner and not taking a Liberian. And I too was a little, you know, I was a little because we do have artists. We, we have artists and there should have been two Liberian artists that evening instead of just me. So Mr. Sambi, whether you were for Liberty Party, et cetera, et cetera, some of you young people are those who have totally discredited your generation. You're talking about you are in opposition to the Unity Party, but I bet you you got money from Amara Kone when you wanted to start your business. Some of us may seem as if we are far away. We follow the news in our country. We know the real Liberians. We know the patriotic Liberians. So don't bring it to me unless I will bring it right back to you. Thanks you so much, uh, Madam Formula, for being here. Well, yeah, please. Uh, pleasure, Abby. Thank I've you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We want to thank our viewers for watching and those who comment, even those who are going to watch later. We at Focus on Liberia, we try and do our best to educate, to elevate, and promote all things Liberia. Keep following us this week. We have all the exciting shows for you. Until then, and we're going to always end with our songs that says we are all Liberians because no matter which political party you support, which ethnic group you may come from, or what would be your upbringing, if you were like me, born all the way beyond God's holy back, or you were born in the city, we are all Liberians, and it is incumbent upon all of us to do our best to make Liberia that glorious land of liberty. Good night, and God bless you. We all are the
Bye.